Hi guys, welcome back. Yesterday we worked on the teal color and we used aquamarine, jade green, 90% cool gray, green okra, and that's how we created the teal color. Now, um, off camera, I went back into every area that I wanted teal. I, there's a lot more finished on it than there was yesterday. Now we're going to work on the burgundy. And the colors that I've chosen for this, we're going to be using a sienna brown, a Tuscan red, process red, white. And instead of using the cool gray, we're going to be using indigo blue because indigo blue looks really good to bring out the tones of red. I know it sounds a little bit bizarre, but it really does work. I do it all the time. It's a beautiful combination. And I think the blue as the tonal color will look great with the teal. We're going to begin with that. And the base color, now I just wanted to show you something on here. I did everything in the same lay down. Um, I started with the aquamarine. I went to the jade green. I did my white and my 90% gray to tone it and tint it where I wanted. And then to give it that greenish color, I used the green okra. Now, if you look at these three leaves, I did it backwards. I started out with the, with the green okra and I did it completely in reverse. And you could see how much more green this is. Same pencils different lay down. So play with that and um, you'll see, you'll get different results. So today's lay down is we're going to begin with the Sienna Brown. And I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna just add in a little bit, a very light Sienna Brown. Now I'm using the Sienna Brown on the bottom to set the darker tone, because I want this to be a rich burgundy, like really wine colored, something that looks like that. Then I'm going to take my Tuscan Red, and I'm gonna do a layer over the Sienna Brown with the Tuscan Red. Now remember, this color is not included in Prismacolor. We are creating a whole new color, which means this all needs to be blended out nicely. We have a pretty dark burgundy started. And I'm going to get in with my process red. And what happens with burgundy is it blends or tints to pink. So I want that pink in there so when I pull that white I get that beautiful pink color that we want and you'll see very shortly it's starting to come out that looks like an expensive wine and now I'm going to take my white And I'm gonna just blend it until my ends sort of meet. Really stretching that pink. And then I'm gonna go in with my indigo blue where I want my darkest colors. And see how the blue complements the red. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more pink in there. Just getting some next layers down. And 
and then back to my white. And we have a very nice burgundy that we just created. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna start with my sienna. Go to my Tuscan Red. And then get my pink in there. Now this is such a small area, I really don't have room for the white to smear out the white, but that's okay too. I'm going to add in some of the blue into the corners where it would be covered up by the hair and shadowed. And then later on, I may go in and put a highlight with Posca in there. And there you have your burgundy. So I'm gonna do that to this area. I'm gonna work on in here, which is gonna look beautiful. And that will be it with the burgundy that I can see. Now, I'm going to do the hair in a very rich brown uh, because I'm going to have some red undertones in her skin too, which will look beautiful with the burgundy. So that is how I did it. I'm going to demonstrate it a little bit for you. And I got to start making dinner. So on the menu tonight is tuna croquets and my husband is making his delicious tartar sauce and with that we're going to have some blackened brussels sprouts blackened brussels can you say that blackened brussels sprouts <laughs> say that three times fast so i'm gonna cook for you for the second half of this video croquettes for dinner tonight. It's really simple to do for a large family so you can cut down the amounts. I use one large potato mash, one onion sauteed. I'm not going to make it really brown. It's like medium so that it's just clear. I'm using three cans of tuna because we have a lot of people. Two eggs with some milk in it. While I'm waiting for the onions, I added the tuna and potato together. And I'm going to add in the egg mixture. Then just mash it up. This is just about perfect. It's just slightly browned and translucent. Now I'm adding in about three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs to give it weight and mass for when I form balls with it. Just mix everything really well and we're gonna form it into patties. Now, spicing this is up to you. I like it with Old Bay, but we don't have any right now. So I'm going to be adding in some onion powder, some lemon pepper. That's what my husband wants. He has the lemon pepper. And some garlic powder. Put them in the refrigerator for about a half hour, and that will make them good breadcrumbs on. Four days ago, I found a sprouted garlic in my pantry. So I have a scraps garden. Whenever I have scraps that I know regrows, I just throw it out in the garden. So I got a whole bunch of garlics regrowing. They're so easy to do. I'm soaking the bottom end in water. And you can see the root system is huge. And that's only four days. So they're just about ready Hitting the six inch mark, they're ready to go into the ground. Shh, everybody's asleep. 
sleep. I'm gonna kill myself on this thing. Oh, there is no way I am letting my feet leave the ground. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get out of this thing. Okay. Okay, we're done. <laughs> I feel a broken leg coming on. Now how do I get out? Um, <laughs> I think I'm stuck. This is going to be a problem. There's no way I can climb down that. Houston, we have a problem. Do do do. Nothing to grab onto. Look at this. We are never doing this again.